first thing Jesus does is, is he condemns worldliness. That's why it says in chapter 18, I saw another angel having great authority on the earth, illuminated with glory, and he cried with a loud voice, saying, Babylon has fallen. And he starts condemning everything in there and, and said it's nothing but, but awfulness. Jesus calls saints to come out of worldliness. Now, wait a minute. You say, wait a minute. Chapter 18, the church is gone. There's still saints on earth. People are getting saved all the time in the tribulation. Plus, the book of Revelation was written for the church to know what God wants. It doesn't matter if it's what he wants in chapter 18, it's still his revelation. So just as much as in chapter 18, God is telling the inhabitants of the earth to have nothing to do with Satan's worldliness, he's asking us the same today. See, Jesus always asks us to come out of worldliness. What does 1 John 2, 15, 16, and 17 say? Love not the world, nor the things in the world. For all that is in the world, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away, and the lust thereof, but he that does the will of the Father lasts forever. But then, you know what it says? Whoever loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Do you know how I know I'm a born-again Christian? I have the love of the Father within me. I have a hatred for sin. I still sin. I have a hatred of sin. I have a hatred of the darkness. I don't even want to talk about the things that are done of them in darkness. Yet there are people that say they're Christians that love the darkness. They spend all their time pursuing the darkness through their games, through their music. So much of modern pop music is about immorality. It's about demons, it's about lust, it's about hatred, it's unbelievable. And they love darkness. And the Lord says, if you love the darkness, the love of the Father isn't in you. Basically, Revelation 18 shows the worthlessness of worldliness. You know, the, uh, it says in verse 9 that the kings who committed fornication, they knit their lives to the things of the world, that's joining to, that's spiritual fornication. They live luxuriously, will weep and lament because it's all gone. It's worthless. Then Jesus shows the end of worldliness. In other words, it's all destroyed and it's all burning. So the question for us is, are you a worldly person? And that question was asked by the first pastor of the first church, of the first book in the New Testament. Do you know what the first book written in the New Testament was? James. James was Jesus Christ's brother. And what he says in James chapter 4 is this. He's talking to the church. There are 108 verses in James. There are 54 imperatives. You know what an imperative is? A command. There are 54 times God says, if you have my commands and keep them, you love me. This is something you have to do to love me. Do you know what James said to those people? Adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world, this is James 4.4, 4, is enmity with God? It gets worse. Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Wow. You know, James, no wonder Luther didn't like this book. He called it the straw e epistle. But look at this. Verse 5. Do you not think the scripture says in vain, the spirit who dwells in us yearns jealously? The Holy Spirit is jealous. We are engaged to Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit lives within us. And he says, you are engaged to Jesus Christ, God the Son, but you, you don't have your eyes on him and you're focused and want to be as close to him, you know, uh, draw an eye to God and he'll draw an eye to you. You're wanting to be saved and you've got your eyes on everything else and want everything else that displeases him. He says, that makes you the enemy of God. But he gives more grace. Boy, it gets better. Verse 6. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. How do we humble ourselves? Submit yourself to God, verse 7 of James 4. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, purify your hearts. And on and on it goes, and it ends in verse 10. Humble yourselves in the sight of God. 